As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and I'm just thrilled that this week Denise is teaching you from her new series and her new book, which is called Jesus is Your Healer. Many people have received Jesus as their Savior, but they've never met Jesus as their healer. Well, Denise came to a moment in her life when she met Jesus as her healer, and her testimony is powerful. Now, please order this, and be sure to also order the brand new book that is just marvelous. It's called Jesus is Your Healer, The Power of His Sacrifice, Both to Save and to Heal. Maybe you know Jesus as your Savior. Praise God. It's time that you meet Jesus as your healer, and that is what Denise is going to be ministering to you about today. And at the end of the program, she's going to pray for you. So let's get started. Ryan, thank you for being with us today. My name is Denise Renner, and my husband has graciously let me speak on his program about Jesus being your healer. And I'm speaking from my book. I, I wrote, Jesus is your healer. And the subtitle says, the power of his sacrifice, both to save and to heal. And in our last program, we talked about so much about what Jesus did for us on the cross. And today I'm going to be speaking from my book and we're going to be talking about holding on to that faith, not letting faith get away from us, but faith stands still. You know, faith is a real place. And so we got to stand in that place of faith. And many times when you're believing for your healing or you're believing for somebody else's healing, it is a real fight of faith. And you real that, that faith has to stand still. That's what I'm going to talk to you today about from my book. And I also want to offer you the study guide that goes with this program and a five-part video series. Now, this could be a blessing to somebody who doesn't want to read a book or doesn't want to take part in a study guide. Maybe they just want to watch a video and this would help them and strengthen them. So I want you to have my book, Jesus is Your Healer. And why would I say that? Because we need to renew our minds. I'm renewing my mind all the time to what Jesus did for me on the cross because the cross, what Jesus paid for is what is ours. And in this world, in this world, it tells you, uh, I mean, the devil's there walking about trying to accuse us before the Lord every single day. It says that. This world is not a keyed up to faith or love. It's perverse. And, but God has given us his power inside of us that we can shine in this world. And believing him and standing fast and standing by our faith and that word of God is a way that we can shine. I know that the times that God has healed my, my body, uh, it's been a tremendous, a tremendous uh, encouragement to others that I've told my testimony to. Uh, I've, told you, I've told you before, but uh, for 13 years, I suffered with a disease on my face. And uh, it wasn't just like, you know, teenage problems. This was sores that went into all five layers of my skin and was on my neck and my cheeks and my forehead. It was painful. It was ugly. I went to doctors. I took their medicine. I did all of that. And then one day I heard on the radio 
by his stripes you are healed. Well, maybe I'd heard that verse before. I was saved. I love Jesus, but I had never heard that. And when I heard it, hope came into my heart. And I said to myself, because when you have something for a long time, a disease, a problem for a long time, you just kind of think, well, this is just my lot in life. Well, no, not with what Jesus did for us. But I, I just didn't have that revelation. And when I heard that scripture, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Hope came into my heart. And I said to myself, you mean I can be healed? Me? I've looked at the mirror for 13 years. I have been to doctors. I have taken their medicine. I have been in pain. I have had bruises on my face. You mean I could be healed? And at that point, hope and expectancy came into my heart. And then I began to confess God's word and and uh, I wasn't seeing anything, but I was, my faith, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today, was standing still. And uh, it was a few months, and I had my miracle. I went to bed one night, just like I had with that disease for 13 years. And I woke up the next morning, and I was completely clean. Everything was gone, gone from my neck, gone from my cheeks, gone from my forehead. Uh, I had so much infection in my face and my neck that people thought I lost 10 pounds because Jesus, somewhere in that night, I don't know if he took 20 minutes, I don't know if he took five minutes, a whole a night's sleep, but I know that his miracle working power came to this disease that had been on me for 13 years and I was completely healed the next morning. So I have a conviction in my heart about Jesus being our healer, not only our savior, but our healer. But that in this place of this fight, we've got to stand still by our faith. And it says in James, and it's in chapter one, it's verse six. It says, let him ask in faith, not, without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And the next verse says, for let that man, that man, that suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord if he is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So we can't be like a wave that's tossed on the sea. We've got to stand still with our faith. And today I want to talk to you about an amazing example of a man in the Bible we have whose faith stood still. And that is in, that's blind Bartimaeus. And it's from Mark chapter 10. And it starts in verse 46. And it says, now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Now, we don't know how uh, blind Bartimaeus, uh, you know, how he happened to hear about Jesus, but there he is by the road begging. And the next verse says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, son of David, have mercy on me. So, of course, blind Bartimaeus can't see Jesus and we don't know how he heard, but we know that he heard. Maybe people were saying, Jesus of Nazareth, make way. It's Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is coming. He's healed the sick. Uh, blind eyes have been opened. Uh, I know a man who couldn't walk and he healed him. Get out of the way. Jesus is coming. And so blind Bartimaeus being blind, of course he can't see Jesus. He only hears and he immediately starts crying out for mercy. And he says, he says, 
son of David, have mercy on me. And he's calling Jesus to come to him and have mercy on him. Well, the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus, he didn't just say this once. I mean, I looked this up in the Greek language. He did not just say this just once. He said it over and over and over and over again. Well, what happens is that the crowd around him, they start screaming and yelling and telling blind Bartimaeus to be quiet. And we can just imagine what they say. Oh, blind Bartimaeus, you've been there ever since I've known you. you you've sat there every single day. You're dirty. You're stinky. You're just blind. You're just a beggar. Forget it. Jesus isn't going to pay any attention to you. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. We don't want to hear from you. You're too loud. Jesus is not going to pay attention to you. And the Bible says that they warned him severely. But did that stop blind Bartimaeus from screaming out? No. The Bible says that he cried out even the more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and so there, he, here's blind Bartimaeus and he's screaming out to have, for, to have mercy upon him. And, and, it, and they want him to be quiet and he screams even the more. Well, I want to tell you something. Blind Bartimaeus, his faith is not moving because of what these other people are saying. No matter how hard they scream, how hard they yell, the bad words they say to him, it is not moving blind Bartimaeus, and he's not moved by the opinions of others. And I want to say to you, friend, if you're in a situation, maybe you're fighting sickness, maybe you're fighting pain, maybe someone you love is fighting pain and you're believing and others around you, they don't believe. And so they speak what they think. You know, that just happened to me recently. I was believing for my friend. She was not in a good place. And the doctor said she could only, she only had a 50% chance of living. And people around me said, you know what, Denise, you just need to get used to it because she is, she's not going to make it through this. And I said, what? Of course she's going to make it through this. And do you know that my friend is walking around and doing very well and that disease is no longer in her body? What if I had given up? Well, my faith, if I had given up, if I hadn't stood still by my faith and she had stood still by her faith, I don't know where she would be right now. But faith, it's a challenge. And it has to stand still. And it has to stand against the opinions and thoughts of other people. And blind Bartimaeus, he's in that very situation where he has to stand still with his faith and not care what anybody else says. Now, as it goes on, blind Bartimaeus is so focused on Jesus. He, he is his focus is on Jesus, on Jesus, the son of David, having mercy on him and giving him his sight. And no one is going to stop him. And so what happens next is Jesus must have heard blind Bartimaeus because it says in verse 49, Jesus stood still. Don't you love that? Not only does our faith stand still, but faith touches God. It says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it's impossible to please God without faith. And so here's Pine Barmaeus, and he's not given up on what he wants from Jesus. And now, and everybody, everybody's shared their opinion and tried to get him to shut up. And now Jesus says... He stands still and he commanded blind Bartimaeus to be called. Then he called the blind man saying to him, this is the crowd, be of good cheer, rise, 
He's calling you. So this is what I want to point out to you, friend. Most people around us, I'm going to say most, some people really care, but most with their opinions, it's just their opinion. And if the wind changes, their opinion's going to change. And you see this in this crowd. They first rebuke him sternly and tell him to shut up. Then they hear that Jesus is calling him and they say to blind Bartimaeus, oh, be of good cheer. He's calling you. So what am I trying to say to you? That, that's, I'm trying to point out how much power do those opinions that we have bent to sometimes, even listened to, even given up our convictions for, and they're going to change on the next day. And that's exactly what happened with this crowd. But it didn't change blind Bartimaeus. And then the next verse we see that blind Bartimaeus, it says that he, in verse 50, and throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Now, why is that and so why is that it's so important? What did that garment represent? That garment was his identity. And that garment was like his meal ticket. That garment gave him the right to come that place on the outside of Jericho every day and beg. And what does blind Bartimaeus do? He takes off that garment and he throws it to the side. What did that mean? That meant that blind Bartimaeus didn't need that garment anymore because blind Bartimaeus was not going to be blind anymore. Can you see his faith? Can you see his faith standing still? There's that garment laying on the floor. Now Jesus, now Jesus calls him. Jesus stands still. Now blind Bartimaeus is standing in front of Jesus. And Jesus says, to Bartimaeus. He says, what is it that you want? I used to think, Jesus, why did you say that to him? Because you knew what he wanted. You knew that he wanted his sight. But friend, it's important that we say out our mouth what it is we want. It involves our faith. Faith has to stand still to receive from God. We see a tremendous example in blind Bartimaeus, ignoring the fact that this is his identity. Every day he goes there and begs. But now there's an opportunity that he could be healed. He screams out. The crowd screams out against him. He throws aside the one thing that gives him an opportunity to receive money. He throws it aside. How can he throw that aside? Because faith will change your identity. Faith changed blind Bartimaeus' identity. Now he stands before Jesus. Jesus says, what do you want? And blind Bartimaeus says, I want my sight. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, your faith. It says, he, it says that he stood there and he said, receive your sight and go your way because your faith has made you well. Jesus didn't say anything about his faith. He was talking about blind Bartimaeus' faith, standing still and receiving what it was that he was believing for. You know, friend, just think about blind Bartimaeus for a minute. That morning when he woke up, 
He was blind. This is a real problem. He is begging for a living. And then over the other side is his miracle. But what's in the middle? It's his faith. Faith is a real place. And blind Bartimaeus went from being blind, believing, having faith, his faith standing still, to receiving his sight. Your faith, don't underestimate your faith. Because the Bible says in 1 John that we overcome in this world by our faith. And faith works itself through love. So we don't want to give up on our faith. No, God is, God has spoken to me. God is going to do what he said he's going to do. I am not moving away from this place. Faith is a real place and we can't move away from it because we started this program with James chapter one, that when our faith moves, it's tossed about like a wave on the sea. Bible says, let that man think. Don't let him think that he'll receive anything from God. We don't want that to be us. We want Jesus to look at us and say, they are standing in faith. They are believing me. Their faith is opening the door for what I've done for them. Oh, friend, probably you've received healing or miracles, financial miracles in your life or healing for somebody else. But I'm just encouraging you now. Don't stop believing in whatever is coming against you, whether it's financial, relational, or your body, or somebody else's body. Stay in there of that place of faith. Now, I'm going to come right back, and I'm going to pray for you. Somebody has asked a good question. Why did they take handkerchiefs? or aprons from Paul's body to those that were sick. And we read about this in Acts chapter 19, verse 12, where the Bible says, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Well, there were people in Ephesus so sick, they couldn't get to the meetings where Paul was. They were homebound and they were bedfast. But people who were attending the meetings wanted those sick people to be touched by the power of God. And they knew that Paul's clothing was so saturated with the anointing. They said, hey, just give us a little piece of your clothing and we'll take that anointing home and we'll lay it on the sick and they'll be healed. And that is precisely what happened because the sick couldn't get to the meeting. They took the meeting to the sick and they took the anointing of God through Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons. And that is why they took handkerchiefs and aprons to the sick. At long last, Denise Renner brings you the powerful series, Jesus is Your Healer. Denise has a special anointing and amazing insights into God's heart concerning healing. And as a personal recipient of God's healing touch, Denise is passionate about revealing God's desire to heal. When Rick Renner heard this teaching, he said, our viewing family absolutely needs to hear every word of this liberating teaching. Healing is just waiting for them to claim, and this series will walk them into the healing arms of Jesus. In this five-part series, Denise covers the healing heart of God, the price that Jesus paid to heal every sickness, pain, and disease, what needs to happen for healing to be received and manifested in your life, the hindrances to healing, and how to remove them. This series, Jesus is Your Healer, is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $11. We are also offering Denise's companion book, Jesus is Your Healer. Rick says, when Denise asked me to read this book, I had no idea what a treasure I was about to dig into. I've read a lot of books about healing, but this is without question the best book I have ever read on the subject. Denise has radically experienced the healing power of God and knows Jesus as her personal healer. It makes sense that in this book, she walks any open-hearted reader right into the healing arms of Jesus. Jesus is Your Healer is available today for $20. Don't wait. Order the Jesus is Your Healer bundle, the series, and the book. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My friend, I want to tell you something exciting. Several years ago, 
we became the owners of a new satellite network that is called GNC, the Good News Channel. And it broadcasts around the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week into 83 nations of the world. And you can be a part of that. If you're already a part of our giving team, thank you. But if you'd like to be a part of this giving team, we invite you to join us. We need you. People are crying out for answers and together we, and you working together, we can really make a difference in somebody else's life. Friend, wasn't that encouraging hearing about blind Bartimaeus and his faith that stood still and would not be moved by anything and not the opinions of other people and moved right forward and received his miracle from Jesus. And that you and I, we need to stand still in our faith and believe God for what it is that he's promised to us. And I want to offer you my book, Jesus is Your Healer, because... We need to keep renewing our mind to this truth because Jesus, he paid a great price and he wants us to have everything that he paid for. And the subtitle says, the power of his sacrifice, both to save and to heal. And this is what I've been teaching from today. And oh, I so much want you to have it so you can keep getting this message deeper and deeper on the inside of you. And also you can have my five-part video series. Maybe you know somebody and they, they don't want to read something, and they, but they would watch something. It could mean they could be healed if this message could get on the inside of them and they could believe it. And I want to offer you my study guide because you can go along with this teaching and it'll get deeper on the inside of you. But I want to pray with you. Father, you're so magnificent. And through what Jesus did, you have completely opened up healing. You've opened up salvation. You've opened up your life to live on the inside of us. And you are our healer. Father, I thank you for your healing power that's touching my friend right now. Oh, receive it right now. He's your healer. He's your savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Friend, I love you. And I want you to join me tomorrow on our next program when we're going to talk about Jesus is your healer. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.